Our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam strikes for us the balance of life wherein there is no increase or decrease from the proper modality of life, the right way to live. And that concept of sunnah, the natural way of life, that example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has been given to us intentionally by Allah azza wa jal, for he informs us in the Quran that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an uswatul hasan, the perfect example to mold ourselves after. And having come to appreciate this, we see therefore that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma farwata fil kitab min shay, left nothing in the book, in the Quran, in the dhikr, the reminder that was sent to us, except that he made it plainly clear and therefore, in the authentic hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he says, "Taraktukum ala al-mahajjat al-bayta." I'm going to lead you upon the well, bright and lit path. Laylaha kanaharha. Whether it's day or night, it's clearly bright. There is no way that you will find disagreement in my methodology of life. It's coherent. The Prophet ﷺ's life therefore becomes a challenge for us in pursuing the love of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ becomes that stepping stone of showing whether we love Allah or not. And the scholars of Islam, they label one of the verses in Surah Al Imran, Ayatul Imtihan, Imtihan, the verse that is in the ultimate test, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul, Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu Allah. If you truly claim to love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يُحْبِرْكُمُ Allah. As such, you will earn Allah's love. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And Allah will grant you His forgiveness and shelter you and protect you from the sins that you work in your day-to-day -day life. And therefore, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the claim to be a devout believer is linked forever and eternally in the example and in your conduct being similar to that of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And therefore, when a man loves a woman, it can only be through that example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We're going to talk about love today. Brothers and the sisters, mashallah, as soon as you hear that L word, what's love got to do with it? You get excited. <laughs> but this is a natural concept. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about al hub wal mawadda, wal ulfa. You know, all these words in, in the Arabic language are powerful language. We may talk about love, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the shades of love, the differing types of love. And the greatest hub and mahabba that is established for us in the life of the Prophet ﷺ is defined to us by the ulama. They say, an hub kamal al-dhul. Love is complete sacrifice. It is complete giving oneself over to another. Now you say, Brother Yahya, can we really use that word regarding another created human being? Should I give myself over completely to something or someone other than Allah? And the answer is no. Not my husband, not my children, no. And that becomes a very important stepping stone in our discussion today. Allah warns us in Surah Al-Baqarah that there are people who love and covet things in a way that only Allah should be loved and sought. It is dangerous to put all your love towards anything or anyone other than Allah, even your husband and even your children. Let us look at some of the wondrous statements of the Prophet ﷺ. كما روى لنا الإمام البخاري ومسلم the Prophet ﷺ says, as is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim, لا يؤمن أحد. You cannot be a true believer. It is not possible to have complete faith. When I, Muhammad am not more loved to you, when you don't love me, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, more than your father, and your mother, and your spouse, and your children. 
You can't be a believer if Muhammad وسلم, is not the greatest human being that you show love to. But why do you show it to a man you haven't met? Why do you show it to a man you haven't seen? Why do you show it to a man who you only hear stories of? Because of your love for Allah. When the Prophet commands you to love him, it's not out of greed or necessity. He wants you to establish love for him in his conduct, in the totality and the perfection of his life, because you seek the greatness of your love with Allah Azza wa Jalla. So today we want to see how the Prophet established that balance of love. Who did the Prophet love? Why did he love them? How did the Prophet show his adoration, his concern, his desire to please those who are nearest to him, his spouse, his wife, his children, his tribe, his people, the believers? How did the Prophet show that in his greatest example of his, of his love to his woman, Aisha radiallahu anha? Because when you look at the master of things, when you look at the head of everyone, Muhammad sallallahu you need to look at who he adored also the most. And this is what we will begin to study after our short break, inshaAllah. We'll come to discover the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to his wife Aisha, and to his wife Khadija, and to his daughter Fatima, and to those who were the believers that surrounded him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and how in that example are normal life lessons for you and I. How it can help you in your home, how it can change my behavior with my spouse, how it can help me raise children who combat the evils of a negative society that we may find segments of it where we are and where we reside. Please join us again after this short break, inshallah.